Team, keep it clean. I'm serious when I say this. Y'all better not be out there celebrating 420. Anyway, Rashad Bateman, he is a heavy topic of conversation amongst Ravens fans. Ravens fans have been going back and forth when it comes to Rashad Bateman, especially over these past couple of weeks, because Ravens fans have very, very strong opinions when it comes to Number seven for the Baltimore Ravens. And they are either on one side or the other. There's some Ravens fans that feel like, hey, Rashad Bateman, he can be like that. He's going to be one of them guys. All he just needs is the right opportunity. If he stays healthy, ooh, it's over for the league. Then there are other people on the other side of Rashad Bateman who are like, nah, I don't see it. I don't think he can be like that. I just, I, I, I don't get it with Rashad Bateman. I don't get all this hype with Rashad Bateman. Y'all just be talking him up too much because he's a Baltimore Raven. Now, me, the side that I'm on, I see it. I see it. The potential's there. The ability is there, but he just got to stay healthy. And I do think he does need the opportunities. But the biggest thing is that he got to get on the same page as Lamar Jackson. But we'll talk about that another time. But apparently, according to social media, Rashad Bateman has removed most of, not all, but most of his Baltimore Ravens pictures from his social media. I looked on that today myself. I did see one that he had, what he had on his purple jacket, and he also had a Baltimore Ravens hat. And, it, and then the caption was just purple and black hearts. So I was like, oh, yeah, that purple and black love. There was y'all, baby. I was like, okay, cool. That, that, there goes one. Then there was another one, uh, the video where he was beating Xavier Howard from the Miami Dolphins, that slam that he took to the house. Oh, it was such a beautiful play. Loved it. But anyway, everything else, gone. Him in the Ravens jersey, any pictures? <laughs> nah. You ain't going to see it there. Now, this could mean a couple of things. Now, one, that it could be because these football players, they see a lot of the stuff that circulates about them on the Internet. They see it all the time, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram. Sometimes they respond directly to people. Sometimes they don't, but they see it. They see it, their family sees it, their friends see it, their people see it, their team see it. They, they, they see a lot of this stuff. So this could be, could be Rashad Bateman just trolling. Could be him trolling Ravens fans. Could be like, man, I, <laughs> watch this. They want to say all that about me? Watch this. It could also be him sort of maybe taking a little detox. Could that be that? Him taking a little detox from social media, taking a detox from Raven stuff? Uh, it could be, but when we've seen players delete... Uh, a team, just a team, everything from their social media. It usually means one thing or another. And that is usually indicative of that player in talks with the team about something, whether good or bad. Again, depending on how you look at it. That player could be in talks with that team about a possible contract. Contract extension. We've seen it before. Remember the whole Kyler Murray saga what was last year, the year before last? Oh, yeah. Da, 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 da. And we've seen it on the flip side, too, with Hollywood Brown. Hollywood Brown, he wiped everything. Everything. I'm like, oh, oh, oh this thing's gonna look too good. And then we saw what happened with him. But with Rashad Bateman, whatever's going to happen with him, uh, it is going to happen relatively soon, in my opinion. Reason I say that, because both him and Adolphia away, but just speaking about Rashad Bateman, they have some fifth year options coming up that the team has to either accept or decline. Now, the Ravens got like, I think like a month in change. They, they got a little while before they have to do that, but there is a deadline for them to do that. So whether they're going to do that or not, we'll know about a little over a month, about a month or two. We'll, we'll know then. But if Rashad Bateman is going to be moved, I think that that's something that we would know within the next five days. Because if, big if now, if the Baltimore Ravens are going to move Rashad Bateman, um, if they have plans on moving a Rashad Bateman, I think it will be something that they will have decided and they will come to the conclusion and they will want that be, to be done before the draft so they can plan even more accordingly. Now, y'all know how I feel about it. With Rashad Bateman, I would love for the Ravens to keep Rashad Bateman and still add another receiver of some significance, whether it be in the first round or whether it be via trade or whatnot. I, I still want them to do so because, again, I see it. I see it. I know a lot of y'all see it too. A lot of y'all don't, but I see it. It's there for Rashad Bateman. It's just a matter of putting it all together. But how do the Ravens feel about it? Well, we'll know soon enough. But speaking of wide receivers possibly getting moved, 
Corlin Sutton has been a name that we've been talking about on here for a while. For a while. And Corlin Sutton is somebody who the Baltimore Ravens, they were linked to a while back, just a year ago. The Broncos tried to ship Corlin Sutton to the Ravens. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it didn't go through. I don't know why it didn't go down. I don't know why the deal fell apart. I, I do not know. I have no clue. But with Corlin Sutton, um, I just felt like when I saw the report last week that Corlin Sutton was holding out, he wasn't reporting. I know it's voluntary now, but he wasn't reporting for voluntary OTA. I mean, voluntary workouts. I was like, oh, hold up now. This could mean a possible trade. And the reason I thought that is because I saw what the Broncos did with Jerry Judy, former first round pick. They traded him for a fifth and sixth round pick. And they, they got him up out of there. And Benjamin Albright, who's been covering the Broncos for a long time, he talked about how with Bron with uh, the Broncos and Jerry Judy and Corlin Sutton, they were not high on either one of the two. And they, they've been trying to get rid of the two for years. They finally got to do it with Jerry Judy this offseason. Why not do it with Corlin Sutton as well? So I felt like that was an opportunity for the Baltimore Ravens to be able to move, make a move for Corlin Sutton. And it wouldn't have to be no crazy. It wouldn't have to be a first-round pick. It wouldn't have to be a second-round pick. It wouldn't even have to be a third-round pick. I think the fourth-round pick would be the highest that they would have to give up, in my opinion. For Cortland Sutton. But this most recent report that came out today from Jeremy Fowler, it says that they feel otherwise. Let's just read it. He says, the Broncos have received multiple trade inquiries on wide receiver Cortland Sutton per sources. Okay, okay. So the Broncos are getting some requests now, but he said the Broncos do not plan to trade Sutton, who is skipping voluntary workouts due to his contract. So, okay. So the Broncos not looking to trade Cortland Sutton right now. All right. Well, that's not the best news in the world, but there's still some hope. Because li listen to this and listen to how this is worded. It says, Sutton is due $13 million base salary with only $2 million guaranteed. That's cheap. But, and he would like an adjustment based on his role as a team leader in a transitional year and ongoing quarterback instability, playing for nine different quarterbacks since 2018. That is insane. That's a lot of different quarterbacks to play for. This is the second consecutive offseason that he's garnered trade interest. All right. So Broncos, apparently, they not looking to trade Cortland Sutton, even though different teams have been calling about him. Me, I think that's just the, uh, the Broncos saying, look, up your offer. We need something better. And this is them just trying to garner up the, the best deal that they can possibly get from another franchise. Because, again, it, it, it's, it's being put out there like, hey, Cortland Sutton, teams are calling, teams are interested in Cortland Sutton, but, and we've received calls from multiple teams. It doesn't say a team. It says the Broncos have received multiple trade inquiries on Cortland Sutton, multiple. So that means more than one. They could be telling the truth. It could be multiple teams calling about Cortland Sutton, or they could be emphasizing stuff. They could be hyping it up a little bit making it bigger than what it seems just to try to really get interest going for Corlin Sutton even more. But they said that, look, we ain't trying to trade him. Now, um, again, we've seen the, this business side of football plenty of times. and it is, it is a lot of times my favorite side of football, the business side, because it, it's, it's just fun watching the game. It, it's fun seeing how different teams and different franchises play the game and how they just try to work different stuff. Now, this part was interesting. The second part of this report where it says Sutton is due $13 million base salary and would like an adjustment based on what? Well, a lot of times when teams are looking to build up a player, to prop up a player, they'll put stuff out there that's really good about that said player to make him look even better. And this, in my opinion, this makes him look like a model NFL citizen because it says he would like an adjustment based on his role as a team leader. You know, leadership is big in the locker room. But he would like a, an adjustment based on his role as a team leader in a transitional year and ongoing quarterback instability, playing for nine different quarterbacks since 2018. So what they're saying, like, hey, he's been playing for all these different quarterbacks, but he's still a leader on this team. That's big. And that would be great in any single locker room. You can never have enough leaders. But it also says at the same time, a little double entendre here, but at the same time it's saying, hey, he's played for nine different quarterbacks since 2018. And still produced. Still been a quality starter in the league. Still has put up numbers with all these different quarterbacks. Now, it's not the DeAndre Hopkins style of production with all these different quarterbacks. But it's still been good nonetheless. So, in my humble opinion, 
I think this is the Broncos propping him up to ship him off. Where will that be? Hey, I, th this is just a very Baltimore Ravens move to me because it's a receiver who is kind of under the radar. Not a lot of people like looking at Corlin Sutton like that. Like the big name right, th right out there now is Brandon Ayuk, and, and I get why because it's Brandon. I mean, he's like that. He's been putting up numbers and whatnot, been very, very productive, G really good receiver. So shout out to Brandon Ayuk. But I feel like people ain't looking at Corlin Sutton as nearly as much as they're looking at somebody like Ayuk. Now, we know with the Baltimore Ravens, like we've explained before, another reason why this makes so much sense is because they love to circle back around. If they don't get somebody initially, then a lot of times they like to dust themselves off and try again. Again, I, I highlighted when they, they did that with Justin Houston. When he became a free agent, they wanted to sign him, but he ended up signing with the Colts. A couple years later, he became a free agent again. Boom, Ravens scooped him up. Unique Ngagwe, he was with the Jacksonville Jaguars. They loved him. They tried to trade for him with the Jaguars. Didn't work out. He went to the Vikings a couple years later. Boom, they ended up trading for him and getting him. Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry, just last year. They tried to trade for Derrick Henry before the trade deadline. What happened? They had everything set up. Everything was good to go. But Titans apparently shut it down. They said, no, ain't happening. What happened this offseason? Who was their big free agent acquisition this offseason? Derrick Henry. So that's all the more reason why them circling back around again for Corlin Sutton on a team that's transitioning again. Because they going from Russell Wilson to whoever's going to be the quarterback next. They got rid of Jerry Judy. They got rid of Justin Simmons, who I also hope becomes a Baltimore Raven. But the Broncos are clearly in rebuild mode. They're not restructuring. They are rebuilding. They starting this thing from the ground up. So when you starting from the ground up, a lot of times players become available for a lot cheaper. Will that be the case with Corlin Sutton? We'll see. Team Keep It Clean, I want to hear from y'all. So let me know in the comment section whether you think Corlin Sutton would be a good move or if you got some other people on your radar. And let me know what you think about this whole thing with Rashad Bateman. You think it's a lot of something or it's a big nothing or what? You let me know. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications all the way on and leave a like on the video. Run them likes up. And again, y'all better not be out there doing no 420 type of stuff.